Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage... AMT was the first model car manufacturer to offer a 125th scale multi-piece model kit of the 6th generation Ford Fairlane in 1968. Another thing to notice on the side of the body is the missing body panel lines. These pins are set too far back and why there is a gap between the chassis pan and the lower fender aprons. So if you have this parts tree, you cannot build an accurate Ford Fairlane Cobra. You can only build the Ford Torino. And now, on to the show. I think the first thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to build this and what kind of car it's going to be. Now, there's no such thing as Torino Cobra for 1969. That came in in 1970. So, based on the bumper you're going to get at the back, it's either going to be a Torino or a Cobra. So, I have both bumper styles. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this one, the 2002 edition, as the Cobra and leave all the Cobra emblems on and all of that. And the other one I was already building as a NASCAR, but it will become a Torino NASCAR. Even though in NASCAR they would have removed the egg crate grill off the back bumper because it was a trim option and it was just a luxury thing, which was a bit of weight. But I, well, I guess I have to keep that in because I can't build this one as a Torino because... <laughs> I shave the Cobra emblems off the NASCAR. So anyway, that's what I'll do. I'll build those two cars. Now, after looking at all the parts and taking in everybody's suggestions and watching YouTube videos and doing my own research, I've come up with this shopping list of things to do for the 1969 Ford Cobra. This is my to-do list. So in no particular order, I have all these things, and they end up being 23 things you could do to this kit. Now this is just out of the box, really, with one thing that uh, is going to be sourced or added sort of differently. But basically, this is to fix everything just out of the box. So we're not talking about adding engine wires or, you know, any extras there, dual dipsticks or whatever you want just basically just to get this right. So the first thing I have is cut down the tube heights and then correct the windshield wiper bag, remove the seam lines, remove window braces. So these were in the sides, the little thing that said remove. Scribe in new panel lines. So that's down the doors on the cowl and at the back of the car. Flatten the interior tub bottom. So those are the welds on there. We're going to flatten those out. Remove the chassis pins. So that was the alignment to go with the tubes. Going to totally get rid of it and glue it in as if none of that existed in the first place. Remove the top chassis bars. Now that was what Trekworks had recommended. Remove mold marks. Well, that's going to be everywhere, right? Ream out holes. So this would be for any of the holes involved with the uh, wheels you know, just to make sure that everything's going to roll nicely underneath there. Reduce the length of the NASCAR wheels. So this is, again, those little pegs. Because remember, they're not really NASCAR wheels on here. What they are is the modified track race car wheels that are going to stick out of the car. So we want to bring those back in under the fenders. Reduce the depth of the stock wheels. So this is on the chrome ones to get that height down so that they actually fit in the tires properly. Sand the tire treads. Radius the NASCAR wheel opening, so that will be up in the front. Glue the interior to the body before, or sorry, after you put the glass in, but before the chassis. So then remove the chassis rear upright. Now, that was the thing in the back, and I've got a question mark here because I'm not sure if we need to do that or not. But if we do, it's coming off for sure. Realign the chassis. Make new hole plates for the rear end. So this is the thing I wanted to show you. Uh, remove hood pins. Now, that's only if you're building the Talladega. If you're building the Cobra or the NASCAR, you want to leave those on. Remove unused parts. So this is anything from the 68 kit or the... Uh, stock car kit from 71 that has the issues. Use high flow exhausts on the NASCAR engine. Drill out the front bumper openings. 
So that was something Pete was doing just to make it look more realistic. And then here is something that would have to be either outsourced or made custom. And that is rear view mirrors because this kit does not actually have any. So now with 23 items on the list to try to fix with this model kit, the real question is, where do we begin first? Well, why don't we start with the tools? So here I have some Tamiya putty. I got a couple of my hobby knives, number 16 blade and a number 11. I can also get the number 18 chisel blade as we go along here, if I have one. I've got these little adjustable points. You might remember those from your geometry sets from school. And then we got a drill and some small drills in this little box here. Then I have my reamers. These are the uh, for enlarging holes. My dad made these actually. Just a, a piece of metal and then he hammered them down so that when you put it in the hole it'll actually enlarge the hole and dig it out a bit. This is a burnishing tool. Now you use that for your bare metal foil, which is another thing we're going to need. And uh, it's kind of like a little spoon with a nice edge. Dad made this as well. It's just a metal rod and then he hammered it, heated it and hammered it down and then, uh, you know, filed this and then polished it. Polished it in the drill press. There we've got our testers liquid glue, our good old testers red tube glue. And I've got a little bit of crazy glue here just in case there's something in the kit that's binding and these are not, uh, you know, they're taking too long to set. So with the crazy glue, you can pinch that together, put a bit of crazy glue in there, hold it for about five minutes or so, hopefully, and let go and it won't uh, let go on you unless it's still kind of soft. Then I have this Atlas Hobby Saw. This was from the model train uh, tools. You know, it's a nice little fine saw. And here we got a couple of files. I also have a sandpaper block. I've got these nifty side cutters from Xeron. And then I've got a paintbrush. This is to represent all my paintbrushes. And two bottles of paint, purple and red. Now those again will also uh, be different, different colors. I got tons. And then I have this little gauge and that's a ruler. And we might be using that to uh, measure certain things and a blue Sharpie, as well as a sheet of evergreen styrene. And here I've got a couple of different thicknesses. What we want to do first is carefully go over the car and find all the issues from just the mold process itself. So for example, with the body, we have that seam line that goes up over here, up the pillars, down, comes across here and drops. So in order to get rid of that seam line, you can use your hobby knife just to scrape away and be careful up along the little bars, you know, scrape along here until you can't feel like that sound, that sound on your fingertips, you know. And then the other thing is to clean up any imperfections like the sink marks in the carpet and in the back here anything underneath like the little bits of plastic in here. Another thing is you want to determine if you're building the Torino or the Cobra because you're going to have to remove the Cobras, the emblems, if you're building the Torino. Also there is a bit of stuff from the mold process in here, again where it was on the parts tree, whereas on the other side it's smooth in there. So you want to get rid of those with your files and sandpaper. And then things like on the chassis, you want to get rid of this from the parts tree. You carefully cut along the edge and clean that edge up with your sandpaper. The other thing I would recommend is get rid of any of these pins that are on the chassis. Just completely remove them because they're only going to end up basically getting in the way. And then on your trees, on your parts trees, the parts on your parts trees. You also want to get rid of the seam lines and uh, get ready for those to be glued together as they would be in the instructions. Now in my research on this video I haven't actually found anybody complaining about the fit and finish of the engine other than those exhaust headers that they say to use on the NASCAR that are actually leftovers from the drag racer. So just don't use those. Use those high flow manifolds from the street rod instead. 
But overall, I mean, the engine goes together quite easily. I got to get rid of this seam line up the middle, and that would run up into the transmission. But other than that, I mean, just build it straight out of the instructions to either one of the three options as you see fit, because, like I said, I haven't heard anything bad about this engine, so might be the only good part of the kit. Who knows? <laughs> Another thing to do would be to discard the parts you are not going to use right out of the get-go. So, for example, if I'm building the NASCAR, I'm not going to need the stock seats at all, so those will go into my parts box. There's also the parts that nobody is going to use because they're from previous existing kits that don't have everything in this kit to make those kits. For example, the intake manifold here, which is really just a valley cover, the intake manifold was from the chrome parts tree. It's a cross ram from 68. It's not in the kit anymore, so this can also go in the parts box. As these push bars from the 71 modified stalker kit, you're not going to need those. Nobody needs them anymore, unless there's some guy with the modified stalker that lost one. <laughs> so those would all go into the parts bin as well. So just clear the clutter out of the way and focus on the model you want to build. I'm going to try to actually clean up the inside of the chassis, and here is that number 16 hobby blade. Now, the way I'm thinking of getting rid of these bars is just to, you know, start doing that. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be working. Now, one thing about these bars, though, is that right in here is the sunken down part, so I want to be careful not to accidentally cut that open when I'm getting rid of the bars. So maybe start from the back and keep your fingers right out of the way here if you're using excessive force like I am. But yes, yeah, go across the top here and then hit into the raised bars and uh, come out this way. And the other thing is to get rid of all the mold marks on here that's easier. So I'm just doing this. And that'll get rid of them. Another thing... No, I don't think that's gonna work. I was just thinking, try to get your file in here, but based on the way that's shaped, I don't think you'd get a file flatly along that edge. So I will just try to dig this out as best I can and then get in here with some sandpaper and flatten it out. Do a bit of cross sanding just to make it level. Okay, so you get the idea, so I will continue with this. So here we have the driver's side of our chassis pan with that bar removed. And if you look, you can see just how nice and flat I got it in there. I also remove those mold marks and use sandpaper in that crosshatch pattern to get this down. And I also scraped the knife this way, uh, dug it down a bit and then scraped it. So now if I put the interior in here, just like Trekworks was saying in his video, we now have the interior sitting nice and flat on the chassis pan. And just for a comparison, if I turn it over to the passenger side, you can see that gap clearly up there. So this is how high this was sitting up out of the chassis, and now it's nice and low. So what I'll do is I'll, con oops, I'll continue and get rid of that bar on both sides so this is nice and flat. The second thing I want to do is take the interior tub. Remember I was saying it's all rough up in here? Now I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but I can feel it. I can feel like a big bump right there, right by that transmission hump. It's actually pretty bad. So I'm going to take the sandpaper and I will just cross hatch. So I'm going at 145 degree angle. And then after doing this for a little while, I'll go at the other one. And that will start to get these lumps out of here. You can really see the lumps when you uh, cross hatch. And there's also lumps up here. This is pretty smooth on the uh, bulkhead, but right where that floor kicks up, right there on this side, it also needs the old cross hatch. And once I get 
through that properly, of course. That was just a demo. And the bar is out. We will take a look at what this is like together and then up into the body. Now both bars have been removed from both sides and you can see it's a lot flatter here. Now I also took the interior and like I said cross sanded up here but then I noticed this was a bit lumpy in the back so I also cross sanded down here and I took this file, this one right here, and I went across this way to get this little notch and make sure that every surface here was let's just call it machined to the right tolerances. So now we've got the driver's side nice and flush, and the passenger side nice and seated, flush I guess. So let's take a look at how this now works in the body. So one thing that was an issue was that the chassis was actually sitting up so you could see a bit of the rail off of the rocker panels of the car. Now on the real car you wouldn't see any of the frame because it's up and hidden in the rocker panels. This is a unibody by the way so those would be your uh, unibody rails at any rate. Okay so keep in mind at this stage I still have the elongated posts in the radiator support but I am going to address those next. But take a look at this. So Trekworks, he was right. Boyd over there, he was right. When this is all seated, you can't see the frame rails on, hanging off the bottom of the car. Because before, let's see if I can jerry-rig this. If you don't remove them, they're kind of sitting... I don't know if you can see that, but they're kind of sitting down like that. But once you get this all flush and fit in here, they become level with the bottom of the rocker panel, just like they are on the real car. So next up, I'm going to get rid of these extended little tubes. Oh, I had another thought too. I wonder if at one point in time the bumper had loops in it. If any of you have ever, ever built a Johan kit, you know that those loops actually fit into the hole. And, well, not in the hole, but the hole is longer or bigger on the loops so that it sits flat. So this would be flush. But I don't know if that's the case. I still think they extended these. And actually, you know, let's see here. I don't know. It, it feels a bit warped right in this section here, which would make sense if they had to you know, use a drill and go down a bit or something like that, that it's reflecting in the plastic. But at any rate, let's clip those. I don't know how well the Zurons will do. I think a saw would be better. Well, maybe it doesn't matter. I was thinking about I don't want to crush the tubes. Well, that didn't crush the tubes, so that's good. So we'll just take this and snip them. Let's try to... Okay. Now, <laughs> I have two of these kits, so if I've done something wrong, I can always glue strips of styrene here to get it back to the height that the tubes were. Okay, our sandpaper pad will fit in. So we'll just get this part nice and flush. So now, in essence, I'm restoring this to what it would have been in 1968 on the first issue of the kit. So now I've got this nice and level. I actually took the block and just went across like this, across the whole bottom of the engine opening here, the underhood detail. Now I also noticed there's a couple of little uh, mold sort of blobs on here. So I'll just get rid of that with the number 16 hobby blade. I'm going to keep that um, mold mark at the top of the shock towers. But get rid of these guys. Anyway, I'll do the other one later. But what we really want to see is how well this fits in now. Because remember at the front 
This was still just angled up a slight bit. So now here we go. And my theory is correct. This is now as flat and as accurate as this body was supposed to be right from the Ford factory with the rocker panels being hidden uh, or the rails of the unibody being hidden now by the rocker panels. So thanks to Trekworks with the flattening the interior. Well, actually, I thought of flattening the interior, but he flattened the those bars that were in here. And then, as you saw, I cut out the bottoms of the tubes and flattened them. So now this will be aligned better, wherever those little holes are. But we're not aligning it with the holes. What we're going to do is align it with the bottom of the shock towers. It makes the letter A in here. And the block is going to go to the edges of those towers. And I do believe that should correct our wheel center issue, but it does still look like this is a little forward. So we're going to use another technique coming up here, and uh, that will shift the hole over. Just as an additional note, this is one thing that I noticed. On the top of the blocks for the wheels, you know, the block down here, you'll notice just a little fin sticking up right there. Same as on the other side, there's a little fin. Those actually do lock into the bottom of the shock towers. Once you get the uh, pins down and those pins cut off, let's see if I uh, get this in here. See, you can hear it. Anyway, you can hear it. <laughs> and the other part is look how nice this fits to the bottom of our unibody frame into the wheel aprons. That's what they're called, wheel aprons. It actually fits so nice and tight in there. Whereas before, remember, we had the gap. So now that's gone. So that solves a couple of the issues. And uh, boy, it looks, looks good. <laughs> Can't wait to get the bumpers and everything on here. So anyway, there's a bit more to do. So let's get to it. So I actually noticed something about the splice area, and uh, I'll just get this frame out of the body, out of body experience. <laughs> anyway, so what you have is where the splice is, this is actually up like, I don't know, half a millimeter, but you can hear it. My thumbnail clicking on the spot. And if you look, you can actually see it lifting up just so slightly right in the front to where the splice is in the back. So behind the splice, it's just a little bit lower than in front of it. So to fix that, because it is apparent when you're looking at the body from the side, you just take your sandpaper and basically go over the top again with a cross sanding pattern. And that should level this out. Now I have noticed some weird distortions just along here and here. And if you can see it, you can see like sort of this weird double bump thing going on right there. And then on this side, there's just a little bit of something sticking out. So I'm going to remove these with my narrow file just by going in along with the file like this. And over there, just to uh, make those lines more angular, as they should be. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now, back to the show. Another one of the issues that we have in the kit is with the factory stock wheels and tires. And we also have an issue with the NASCAR wheels, because the NASCAR wheels are not really NASCAR wheels. They are all modified for the modified stocker so they are sticking out more. But in this segment, we will deal with our factory stock wheels. So what the problem is, is that these are too deep, the chrome part. And we can tell because when you put this into the tire, that chrome is almost coming out the back end of the tire. It's just right on that inner uh, bead. Yeah, the inner bead right there. And then our backing plate, if we put it in, Hopefully you can see this on camera. 
but it is actually sticking right out of the wheel. So we need to reduce the height of this right in here. And what I'm going to try to do is reduce it by two millimeters. So there's our little gauge and I have my points and I adjust them in and out and I've got this down to two millimeters. So what I'll do is use the slightly longer needle and just turn this wheel. And with the bottom needle, it will scribe in a little light ghost line. And I'll, I go all the way around. And then I can use that atlas saw and saw this where the line is. Or I could use my sanding block and sand down, get rid of all this plastic until the sanding block hits the line which might be more controllable maybe than the saw, maybe a bit safer too. And then that will reduce this height by two millimeters, which incidentally or coincidentally is the size or the thickness of the backing plate. So we will remove the thickness of the backing plate out of this and then test it in the tire and see if it actually sinks in like it should and be correct. The good part about this is I have two kits on the go one is the NASCAR and the other is the factory stock. So if I mess up one wheel, uh, I can reduce instead of two millimeters from the edge, go maybe millimeter and a half or something and try it on a different wheel. I have four shots to get it right. And then the other four factory stock wheels from the other kit will be all cut down and used if this is the wrong thickness. If it's the right thickness, then I have a spare set of extra wheels. I am actually getting a bit of success using the Zeron cutters. So I cut down at a bit of an angle, then came in and snipped like that, and got in enough so that I could get the Zeron cutter blades in here. Nice thing with these cutter blades is they're supposed to be a 90 degree angle, or yeah, basically. And the blades are supposed to be specially designed so that it doesn't make the piece you're cutting like that, but makes it perpendicular. So that's always kind of a neat thing. So just be careful cutting around the line. Basically nibbling this out. What they call this. Well, almost to the other side. Ooh, I might have cut a bit too low right there. <laughs> okay, so let's smooth this out as best we can now. Okay, so I might have to be a little more careful uh, doing this. Oh yeah, it looks really raw. Okay, but it does still click into place. Now, dusty fingers. That's looking more like where it should be at. Now the moment of truth. There it is. Now that's really tight into the rim, as you can see. And again, this didn't take me very long. Might need to perfect out the back of the chrome wheel there. I'll probably have to clean up a little bit inside, but again, this looks right. So that is it. Two millimeters seems to be the key there. And again, try to sand this down nice and smooth. But yeah, so that I can glue that together. I don't even have to scrape the chrome off of here because I sawed it off or snipped it off actually. Might even scrape a bit of chrome out of the center cap and apply glue all over. But that's basically it. So you saw how quickly that took. No time at all. And this will make the tire fit into the rim better. Okay, after doing two tires by clipping them with the Zeron cutters, I'm not satisfied with that. So instead I've actually just, I'm still using that scribing tool or the points, but instead I'm just sanding it down and it gives me a flatter, flusher finish. 
and I can actually control it by uh, seeing how far I've sanded periodically and then stopping when I think it's close enough. But basically, there's your wheel put together, and here it is on the tire, and there's enough space for the tire to actually, you know, uh, move outward a bit in the center, pucker outward, I don't know. But uh, this rim will fit on here perfectly now, and a lot better than with the cutters. Yeah, so you get a nice flush finish on there. Now all we have to do is sand that tread, and then we can glue these, well, can glue this together, and then stretch the tire up over top of the rim, and that'll do it. But yeah, so basically, just a little bit of ingenuity and some sandpaper, and you can get those down to where they're supposed to be. Now that we have our factory stock wheels together, we can align the chassis by just sliding it back and forth like so. And I think that this block should be at the bottom of those A posts, like I was saying earlier. So now here is our stock wheel. I've added a little metal axle in here just temporarily through the two holes, uh, because these will be pinned from behind. Anyway, so there is our wheel. Now you can see that it's centered in the wheel arch here pretty well, but the back wheel is forward of the wheel arch because this should be centered as well, so this entire wheel has to move back this way. Now Jimmy Erdman actually has a really cool suggestion for this, and it reminds me of the way Johan used to do their wheel blocks right in here. If you guys remember, it's a separate piece that goes in, so instead of a hole drilled like in the chassis back here. So I'll just show you Jimmy's pictures and uh, you'll get the idea of what's going on. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a spin into Jimmy's idea here. This is just for alignment purposes. So I'm keeping the original hole for just right now, but I will drill in the bigger hole. The thing I'm thinking of is when you drill in the bigger hole, you're now going to have to like adjust the block all over the place. So one thing that will help you to align the block is see, I'm using this edge here because it should be nice and flat. And I'm adjusting my points to the center of that hole. And I'm just going to make a line across like that. Describe it in on both sides. Now the point of this line is so that once we drill the big hole, because remember we're going to have a new plate here with this whole size in it, so the 1 16th drill bit, but we're enlarging the hole to something else. Then when I make the new block, I can uh, use these lines here to line the center of the new hole when I move it back. So that's just my little uh, addition to that, just so you can align it properly and you don't accidentally skip a side up or something like that. So now it's experimentation time using Jimmy's idea here. So I took a big drill and drilled right through the center of the little hole. And then I took my points here and I opened them up so that one was touching this edge and the other was touching this edge. And once I had that, I was able to take the points along a sheet of plastic here and cut out a strip like this, or, you know, get it loose. And then I cut off a little square. And now that square fits right in here. And then what I did was I opened up these points again to the top and came down, you know, like this. And those marks that I made before, I went across. And basically, there is the block glued on the other side. So like I was saying, I went across and I found that line again. And then I pinched my calipers down. And what I sort of discovered by moving the tire around with the body on is that the hole really needs to be... You see the... Uh, the bolt, okay, the shock comes up, and then there's like this little ridge right here. This line should come down here. 
and the hole is going to go right on those crosshairs from the line we drew before and then this line which I'm going to you know go this way from the furthest end up or whatever <laughs> and then I get a crosshair right in the center here so one there and one across so now when I drill the hole into that block it should line up I'll have to do the same on this side but that should drop that right in location with the axle and keep this height and everything here so that it's equal to the front axle so there was no movement of that square so here we have our wheel in the brand new hole that was drilled and now you can see that this is sitting center to that wheel arch and up front we've got our block at the bottom of the A's and when we get that wheel on this one has a bigger hole so it's sloppy that's for those pins anyway there it is centered in there and if we move along you can see it's centered in here so now we have the correct distance now when I did drill the hole in order to get the axle to spin I had to use that reamer tool and just ream it out just a little bit by twisting that in and then I was able to get the metal axle to spin because it was locked tight anyway so next we can take a look at the NASCAR tires and cut them to fit inside here and uh, see how it goes next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. The rear wheels are now in the same track as the front wheels, but the real ones actually had a little bit of a tread into the slick, and they look like this. But if they were a little narrower, we wouldn't have to cut the rear wheel arches open. And now what I'll do is I'll just go and cut those out. Just carve in a little bit at a time. All right, so I've just done the initial inscribing here and I had to adjust it a little bit. So now I'll just remove the tape here. 